Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, how to overcome the guilt of not being thankful enough? Is the dissatisfaction from shaitan or is it the nafs? Overcome the guilt? Yeah, we, we're, we're action people so those are like you know, philosophy things. I want to sit and feel guilty but you need to have an action. The only thing you can do is to be thankful and begin to take a day as of tomorrow, I'm going to be thankful and in everything I do I'm going to show my thankfulness, alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah. I'm going to study the realities, I'm going to immerse myself in the realities, I'm going to propagate the realities, I'm going to do my practices that Allah has given to me deceit and what did I achieve with it? And that's when we ask ourselves, what well, to sit in and worry about what guilt? The moment you wasted time thinking of guilt, that two minutes you could have been praising and thanking Allah so we're not a people to think backwards but go forward. Whatever happened in the past is already written and it's in the past. But as of right now once we heard that reality then those whom will begin to act upon that reality. And at night time they ask Ya Rabbi please. For but to be thankful and show my thankfulness. That I don't walk on it, I don't walk against it, I don't try to, to just put it aside as if it's nothing and, and what I want is more important, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam When during negating the self, do we hold the heart connection or the pulse? When negating the self, do we what? Uh, hold the heart connection or the pulse? What does that mean? I don't understand. Hold the heart connection or the pulse? The negation is not you, you hold your heart or your pulse, I, I'm not understanding the question. The negation is I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm connecting with the shaykh that I'm nothing, asking the dress of the shaykh to be upon me. And now you're going to hold your pulse but then you're too present at that time. So how are you negating yourself if you're being conscious of your pulse? So it's not about that, it's about entering in a state of nothing and visualize that I'm in the presence of the shaykh and that I don't want to be in your presence, I actually want to be nothing. And I want your tajalli to be upon me and your dress upon me. And the more that you can see the ruhaniyat of the shaykh upon the self, and the more you begin to vanish. If that, if that presence is, is a thick and you're still there then more of you has to vanish until you can reach a state in which you visualize the shaykh and you no longer see yourself, you've vanished. So it's not about the pulse and the heart and, and you don't want to be conscious of any beats because that calls you into being present in yourself. This is about a meditative state in which you, you come to terms with you don't want to exist and this is not self-harm and, and mental cuckoo stuff. This is about that my manifestation has to cease and that I'm not asking to manifest, I'm asking to be nothing. And as a result of that we described before we didn't manifest for 20 years. <clears throat> so that's a state in which you have to take yourself to a nothingness and in your meditation and contemplation I'm nothing, I'm nothing and bring the presence of the shaykh, bring the dress of the shaykh until that you can represent that light and to vanish and then to uphold their way and their laws so that your egoism doesn't enter in. Every time we do bad deeds and bad actions the ego becomes stronger again and then the layer of the shaykh becomes thicker. Instead of the shaykh's light coming in, it's our ego is pushing out again. So that's why then the good character, the good actions, when they can reach that state means they're very ethereal, very light, 
as soon as they meditate and contemplate they're quick to leave and as a result the light that begins to dress to them from their shaykh and that's a Muhammadan dress, that's a Muhammadan light that begins to reflect through our being. And that's when we said, if you're a particle and you're manifesting how can you have your dual state? a wave state that so we have, we have a duality and people are stuck on that duality. If they destroy the particle state, bring it down and negate it, then what happens? You train for your wave state and you begin to enter into a world of light which is, is completely different than the world of form. How you manifest in this world of light is not how you manifest in this world. Your image doesn't even look the same, you're of an ancient reality. So you, you don't even look like your physical being. That world of light is, is something unimaginable. But it can only be achieved if we negate the particle world and the particle reality inshaAllah. <coughs> uh, As Alaikum Sayyidi. When one is trying to hold the tongue but the thoughts are still angered, are there any effects from that? If you're holding your tongue and your thoughts are still angry then yeah you have to use your weapons. One is break away from whatever is angering you in discussions and that's why we don't get into discussions, you immediately cut the conversation and go make your wudu and go meditate. Anyone who prolongs is now entering into something with shaitan. <clears throat> Anyone who, who loses their temper and becomes angered and you stay on talking to them, now you're dealing with shaitan. Once the faith has gone, who's there? So imagine two people, they're on the phone, they're talking, talking. All of a sudden things go wrong and one begins shouting, immediately hang up the phone, go wash. You're on… you're talking to who now? That's why you take all of what's been taught as a reality. As soon as the shouting and yelling comes, shaitan has entered into that person. Faith has gone because qadab, anger is kufr. This is teachings of Prophet Your qadab and anger is disbelief. So you enter now into a momentary disbelief, hope, hopefully it's momentary. Shaitan has taken over your faculties and now shaitan is yelling and screaming. Immediately disconnect, disconnect from the conversation, go wash and begin to pray. And the other person if they're in tariqah they have to do the same. It's not a time that you keep calling, I want to yell and scream at you, I want to resolve something. There's nothing to resolve anymore. You have surrendered yourself to shaitan and with shaitan there's no winning until he gets into the other one too. So there's no game against shaitan. All that Allah asks is not that you're going to beat shaitan but say, A'udhu Billah means run, take a cover from uh, shaitan and run to Allah so you disconnect from the communication, immediately you go wash and then you go pray until you can bring an aramesh, a peacefulness back into your heart. Only at the angelic state you can re-engage with someone to discuss something. But people know now it's like full-on battle, they don't stop, they don't stop until shaitan goes into all the conversations and that's exactly what he wanted. <clears throat> so the tariqah comes to teach all of these realities to keep one's state, to keep oneself preserved, to keep one's energy with wudu and taweez and, and all of these teachings. If you take it for serious and you take it for real, that's what we talked about is, is, is keeping the ihtiram. That you're in the tariqah, you don't think that Allah is allowing shaitan to come right into you? Of course He is, hundred percent. He's in the game hundred percent, especially for those in tariqah because Allah is, is now testing them. So your tariqah training was to immediately disengage.
So they show like these movies when a, like a predator is coming into their spaceship, immediately the door goes up and it disengages from everything. Otherwise if that demon gets into your box is eating you. So no difference in our training, everything is, is real and Allah will make it to be real. And that shaitan has an authority to come in and begin to destroy everything. So it's very real and, and these are the practices that Allah has given and Prophet has given. It's a matter of ourselves to take it and use it inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Please forgive me for the childish question, but can people see the condition of their families in Alam e Barzakh? What was that? Can people see their families in Barzakh? Can, <clears throat> can the one died see their families? Or yeah, the, other way. the people on this side see Barzakh? Yeah, of course, the people on this, that's the whole connection of Madad. Because you're seeing the shaykhs from their, the ones who passed and, and everything. Once you've trained in your connection in the world of light, you, you can see anything in the world of light. Those whom pass, those whom are in the grave, those whom are free from the grave. Unless Allah has closed the file and they're under some sort of punishment and that is, is then for a shaykh to enter into that and, and to begin to make du'a for that person. But the whole reality of communicating in the world of light is open. Now the other is, is, is true also, those who pass away they're very much able to view their family's lives on this earth. That becomes its own form of punishment because they have to see the torment and difficulty and the abuse that their families are going through. And because they can't intervene and they, they didn't establish their reality that had an ability to intervene then that becomes its own level of torment. So we pray that Allah give us a, a soul that can communicate, a soul that is enlightened and that Allah fill us with Divinely grace and, and forgive us our wrongs and dress us from the immensity of these nights and these blessings. So, Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, so can spiritual practices fluctuate iron levels in one's body and change the temperature of one's body? Can the spiritual practices change what? Fluctuate iron levels in one's body and change the temperature of one's body. Fluctuate the iron levels in the body and change the temperature? Yeah, interesting, I don't know if the fluctuation in the iron level based on, on meditation, but I know that your iron level is important for the muraqabah and the, the energy because the, the energy attaches itself to the iron. So the energy of the body it's, it's has a direct correlation with the iron in the blood, the cleanliness of that iron, the purification of that iron and no doubt when energy comes that the heating of the body is because of the energies that are coming, the energy hot or cold depending upon the different types of energy. But uh, iron is an essential element in the meditation and that's why hijama and cleansing and zikr and all of these practices are meant to purify the iron in the body inshaAllah. And those whom are iron deficient then they, they have to take uh, iron supplements and, and different ways to bring the levels of, of iron up so that they can benefit from the meditation, the spiritual practices and their all around health and the improvement of health, hair loss, uh, temperature sort of malfunctionings, people have a low iron they're, they're always cold and the oxygenation is not reaching them, is not oxygenating in their blood so yeah many other sort of uh, difficulties by low iron, but iron is essential in the meditation and the muraqabah inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, I work at night alone. Is it advisable to meditate at the place where my co-worker stay during morning shift? You can if it's a clean and, and safe environment. If it's out in the open and 
you attract, you know, not so good energies around you, then you may have difficulty. You have to sort of gauge that based on your surrounding. And if you have the ability to sort of have a, a clean space, a good space that you meditate in, then inshaAllah, it depends upon your environment and what you feel from the energies, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. During the zikr, is it better to meditate or to follow along? I'm somewhat conflicted as what to do. Well, you're meditating and following along, with, what is the difference? Close your eyes, connect and do your zikr khafi. If you're meditating and don't want to sort of move your lips and move your hands or you can do it with moving the lips and the hands and just keeping the heart connected with the shaykh because everything has to be in a meditation. We said that uh, everything you do you're asking that not to exist and that the dress of the shaykhs to dress me and that I'm non-existent, I'm non-existent. That I want to do zikr in the dress of the shaykh and not myself, inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, um, the question is, blessings of visiting maqams of shaykhs and awliya. What is the blessings of visiting maqams of shaykhs and awliya? What are the blessings? The lights, inshaAllah, they're all Muhammadan lights. So as soon as you enter, it's like entering the sun, it begin to wash away all the difficulties and dress that servant with the illuminations upon their soul and their heart because those are all Muhammadan lights. So these big habayb and big ashiqeen, they were big lovers of Muhammadun Rasulullah So then those maqams have uh, the presence of Prophet light and has immense cleansing and, and blessings and takes away difficulties. And that's why it's good to visit the maqams with wudu and with all the adab as if you're visiting Medina. And you sit and you make your salawats, connect your hearts and make salawat al Nabi and asking to be dressed by that Muhammadan light inshaAllah. And making your meditation, connection, connecting with the shaykh, connecting with the maqam and asking for the light of Prophet to be present inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi we're getting a few questions about this. Uh, Sayyidi, what are some characteristics we should look for when choosing a spouse? Characteristics you should look for? Yeah. Somebody with good characteristics, inshaAllah. That somebody has a, a love of. You know if your path is on this path towards the love of Sayyidina Muhammad then you'd uh, hope for somebody with uh, the same love, that they have the uh, immense love for Prophet and uh, that they want to, to reach to that and they want to be dressed by that love and they want to raise their children in that love, inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi. Sayyidi, what is the reality of feeling you are being held down as you just fall asleep, where you can't move and struggle to wake up? Also if you see people you know and snakes coming from them in a dream. Yeah, the sleep paralysis that uh, there are many different energy beings <clears throat> and they try to very much hold somebody down with their energy. So when they come around in an area they try to hold that person down and as a result they have a feeling that they're being held down, literally being held down and they can't break from it. It requires a, a burst of energy to break from that type of a grip and those energies come from extreme emotion. So if you can yell very loud and yell with an anger like a, a roaring lion so that to bring yourself to an energy that brings out your reality that sort of releases that grip and it comes uh, naturally after a point of training that there's an extreme under… these these realities come under extreme emotion, right? If everything's going great that reality doesn't come out. In the event something should come 
of an extreme reality, immediately your fierceness like a dragon or a lion would come out yelling and roaring and as a result of that energy coming out it goes after them, inshaAllah. But your meditation and muraqabah and connection is most important to bring that reality and that energy out, continuously making the connection, make the connection because that connection begins to unlock our reality. That's when we describe that everybody is in a particle state but they're under observation. As a result of their lack of maturity the observation holds them in a particle state. When you connect with the shaykhs they're of a wave reality. As a result their wave reality comes to be present with you. <coughs> they have the abundance of overflowing energies. And these energies begin to come and, and to energize the soul and begin to teach the soul and teach the body how to begin to unlock that reality. Because for somebody to correctly meditate with tariqah they have to negate. And that's the fastest way to understand that, if you want to lose your particle because proud people are, are big particles. Proud people don't meditate. So this concept is that, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, anta subhanika inni kuntum minna dhalimeen ya Rabbi, I'm, your glory be to you, I'm an oppressor to myself. As soon as I make my connection then that light from the shaykh and the energies from the shaykh that's coming as a reflection from Atiullah, Atiya Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum. This is a reflective light coming from Allah coming from Prophet coming from the Ulul Amr and then that shaykh is just reflecting that light, he's not a source of it, he just reflects that light onto that person. As a result that light comes and keeps reducing the particle aspect of somebody negating them to be a nuqt and as a result if you reach to be a nuqt then that light can begin to enter into that person and that light begins to then dress them and bless them. So what happens with somebody who becomes a wave reality is then these wave realities can dress people. And that's why the shaykh when he negates himself then the souls of pious people can begin to dress him and bless him and operate through him inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam Sayyidi, according to the levels of the hard book, uh, why are there only six prophets mentioned and only those specific colors and no other colors besides what's mentioned in the book? But those are the base colors, from every color you get everything, you derive everything. These are the, the Prophets that control those latayas. So the mentioning of other Prophets in, in relation to the latayaf and to the keys, these are the six Ulul Azam, the great Prophets of Allah That's the glory that Allah has given to them. As a result they hold the keys for these hearts. And this Adamic heart and, and uh, the reality of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, Sayyidina Ibrahim, Sayyidina Musa, Sayyidina Isa, Sayyidina Muhammad they are the custodians of that heart, its reality and its opening. And from yellow, if you look at the levels of the heart you have the yellow, the red and black. From yellow to black you have infinite in the spectrum of that color, from yellow to red the hues of red and yellow as they diffuse there are then infinite colors between yellow and red. So the whole of the latayf is a symbol of all the potential colors. And between white and black and blue or the, the green latayf, blue or greenish latayf, then again there's unlimited amount of hues within the diffusing of these colors. So. They have infinite realities but 
those colors are specific to Sultan al Awliya Ma Shaykh Abdul Faizid Dagestani's bringing out of that reality for Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah, which has an immense importance. So, this uloom and this knowledge that flows through this color yellow and symbolic in life, yellow represents knowledge. So then the, the angel that brings this knowledge has a yellow hue <clears throat> So then all, all the book is about that reality, so that's why you have to try to master that understanding and, and the reality of that understanding inshaAllah all, <coughs> all other colors will be found within those. Inshallah. And the red for, for, for war, the, the red for blood, why our blood is red because of the iron and iron is for war and battling and insan has to build themselves, build their iron, build the red. And Sayyidina Mikail is then of that reddish reality. So everything has a, is an immense reality to unlock. And why those colors are important for us in our struggle and in our movement towards the Divinely Presence. Imam Mahdi comes with a reddish complexion and red turban. <coughs> so that has an importance with the, the war and wars that are coming and the state of struggling and that Sayyidina Mikail is an immense support and has to do with the perfection of your rizq and sustenance. The Mahdeen dress because Sayyidina Mikail is for rizq and war. And why are those two connected? Because it has to do with the rizq of the soul. That that color has to dress the soul and Sayyidina Mikail is responsible for bringing the sustenance that soul is required in its struggle to reach Allah so that also has to do with Mahdiyoon. So if they're going to be in the last day someone who struggles, they're Mahdiyoon, they're of a Mah Imam Mahdi dress. How are they going to fight the Dajjal and all these energies if Imam Mahdi doesn't dress them today? That's why then they take to their good character, their, their good example and Allah then give them of a reddish hue and that tajali. And as a result with that tajali, they're able to move and to fight devils and to, to fight these afflictions and difficulties to the best that Allah allows inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam So what is the significance of a physical journey to Mecca and Medina on our spiritual journey? The, the physical journey on your spiritual journey? Didn't understand. What is the significance of a physical journey to Mecca mm -hmm. and Medina on our spiritual journey? On your spiritual journey, what is a physical journey? Don't I don't understand? You go on a physical journey is one, going to Mecca, Medina for your ziyarat, and then spiritually to always be there. So every time we're making prayers we are on a journey to Mecca and Medina and that the, the, the Qibla of the heart has those realities and we have a, a talk about those states of, of the Qibla and the direction. And that has to do with the perfection of their Islam, their Iman and Maqam al-Ihsan. So Mecca and Hajj and Medina these were for us to understand. But more important was to understand the spiritual reality of these and we have it in the book of uh, Hajj, the realities of Hajj. What's the name of the book? Realities of Hajj? Yes, inshaAllah. And that's coming up now on the 12th month. I recommend anybody who, who wants to know that reality of the completion of this journey to get the realities of Hajj and it's not about the going for hajj. The hajj, these were all symbolic 
we're supposed to physically do those practices so that we would spiritually understand where Allah's dressing us, where is Allah taking us and, and which direction are, is our soul facing. So those are important understandings but you can't say it now because people will become confused but when they spiritually progress they understand that they're facing Kaaba. Then at a higher level they're facing something much greater, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi spoke about the realities of sound and nazar. What is the difference between getting the nazar of Prophet and hearing his holy speech as the companions did? Yeah, the nazar is, is a tajalli. So to be under the nazar and the grace and emanation is an immense light that Prophet through his Divinely eyes that dresses. And from Rahman and Rahim that one eye and the other eye and the tajalli of those eyes dress the servant with Sifat rahman and the perfection of Sifat rahim and that perfect them in dunya and in akhirah and that's the perfection of their physical life and spiritual life by the nazar of Prophet But the sound of Prophet is something completely different and nobody can hear that true voice of Prophet of what the holy companions heard because of the capacity in which Allah created their souls to be the vessel for that reality. So as a result of, of the perfection of those souls that Allah created and called them the holy companions, it gave them the ability to hear that Divinely sound of Sayyidina Muhammad So that's what makes them to be kiram, that's what makes their station to be something that cannot be achieved by any saint because of the hearing of the sound of Prophet that's the reality of manifestation. So if you break down your form, you have a form, you break it down to your atomic reality, then you break it down to your energy reality and then you break it down to a sound. So you're actually manifesting based on your sound. So imagine then what's the most noblest of sound is the voice of Prophet Because nobody can manifest what Prophet was hearing because he heard Allah, not an angel, not a Prophet, no one heard and hears what Prophet hears. Nabi Musa did not hear Allah, he heard Sayyidina Muhammad Only one whom hears Allah is Sayyidina Muhammad as a result He's manifesting, he manifests in the greatness of his light by virtue of the sound that being elevating him. And that's why Allah clarifies, in Allahi wa malaikatahu, in Allahi wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi that verily Allah and his angels are praying and praising upon the reality of Prophet That shows the station. Allah is not praying and praising upon anyone. And Allah's Divinely speech can only be heard by the soul of Prophet as a result his light not something understood and as a result it's manifesting from the power of Allah's zikr. So then companions are manifesting from the power of the zikr of Sayyidina Muhammad in all creation. And that's why then you step down towards these awliya and what each wali is hearing through their consciousness and through their soul and through their secret then they also then are manifesting that same reality. So anyone who hears their voice and hears their talks 
their voices and the sound that they vibrate at changes the reality for people, dresses them and changes their form, changes everything about them. Just by the vibration and the tones that are coming and emanating from their soul and from their speech, inshaAllah. Mm-hmm. As Salaamu Alaikum respected Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah What schedule of ibadah do good students keep? Do they all wake up for tahajjud? Yeah, I can't speak for, for anyone but myself. We try our best in life and you, you, depending upon your work schedule and schedule and whatever you have then you, you try your best to, to fulfill your worshipness for Allah and some, some go to sleep early and wake up and pray, some stay up and pray and, and they try their best to do the, the, the worshipness to make Allah happy and to fulfill their covenant with Allah And Allah then make it easy for the servant inshaAllah to, to fulfill their covenant and the, the way of manners and the way of good character is supreme. So even if the servant's worshipness is little bit off but their manners are exceptional, Allah will make everything to be easy for that servant. But if the servant is heavy on their worshipness and awful with their manners, their worship is like garbage, it has no value at all. So that's what then tariqah comes to show that reality. That there are those whom they, they're extreme on their worshipness but they were burning people in cages. So these, these are devils. So it's not about being hard on all oh, my practices have to be exactly… No, because I already acknowledged that I was a weak and, and ignorant servant. So as a result, Ya Rabbi give me good character, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'll try my best and I'm going to sleep early and, and do wake up and if I have nothing to do I'll stay up and pray and give me good character, give me good character and then Allah will test you. And then throughout the day if you have good character and good example then that was a blessed day. So this way is based on the good character, not fighting, not yelling, not screaming. And then Allah finds satisfaction in however you worship to the best of your ability. So it should be common sense, you're good, you're sweet, you're kind and you're doing whatever you can of your worshipness, it's a little bit off, it's a little bit good but you're such a kind character. So imagine then everything you do that is pleasing to Allah So, oh mashaAllah this one is nice, he's look at that, it's so kind, it's so kind, it's so kind. Then do the reverse where you're doing all, all the prayers, rigid, 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 rigid. The person's very mean, angry, yelling, it's as if the Divine Lord doesn't even look that way because what was the benefit of all of that if the character didn't change? So it means then those, those actions must be hollow and didn't have a benefit means there was no barakah in it. That's then the secret in tariqahs, have good manners, have good manners. When you have good manners then everything you do counts. Because it has a tremendous weight with Divine Presence, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. If we got COVID, does this mean that demons can enter us easily? And is there any reality to this new virus? There's a reality to every virus. <clears throat> and there's monkeypox and chickenpox, and this is just beginning. This is not the end, this is just the beginning of a state of sudden death will come into this world where people will suddenly die from whatever they, they, they catch. But no, that was just a flu and if you have your taweez, your zikr, it's a cold like any other cold. But there is a demon around and that's what that demons and those shayateen are trying to enter into people. But when they have their taweez, their protections, they're, they're doing all the things that Allah has asked of them, then it becomes a common cold less the demon and the shayateen. When they don't do what Allah has asked of them, 
then they can easily become possessed and as a result the, the cold is just a, a weakening of their system for something much more nefarious to enter within them. But the cold itself is not something bad because it gives you built-in immunity and they don't want to admit it but they know that anyone who has a built-in immunity from Allah because once you get sick you have now your own defense mechanism inside your body from Allah is far, far greater than any synthesized immunity that somebody injects into you. They're trying to play Allah but they don't play it very good. So they synthesized an immunity, told everybody to take it and everybody got sick still because they're not Allah. But when Allah allows you to become sick then you will have an internal immunity from within that will strengthen the body as a defense mechanism against these sicknesses inshaAllah. And you take your vitamins and medications and everything that you're supposed to take inshaAllah and the taweezahs, zikrs and all the namaz, salah, Qur'an inshaAllah. And Allah is the best of those to defend His servants inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Sayyidi, what is a good remedy for gout and is the cause spiritual? Everything has a, a spiritual element but the gout and too much meat there, you have to seek medical advice. I think they describe uh, cherries as a, as a good sort of reduction and reducer of the element that brings gout, reducing red meats that, that the body takes and, and makes the, the gout. So all of these different medical issues and then any type of negative energy and then they become under attack. But inshaAllah Allah address you, bless you and then and try your best to seek medical advice on the medical remedies for gout and then the homeopathic remedies that reduce the uric acid that is creating the gout which is they say if you reduce your red meats that uric acid will go down and cherries takes it down, pineapple is anti-inflammatory. So alhamdulillah Allah gave us remedies within our food and anything we eat of a balanced nature. That's why they're advertising these ridiculous diets of just meat. There's somebody came on top I eat meat, I only eat meat like a, like a I don't know what, what do you call a, flesh eater like a flesh eater, I only eat meat and I got better. I would think that if you only ate meat in two weeks you'd have gout on your entire body because of the amount of uric acid that you would produce. And we'll go into the joints and crystallize and that becomes the immense, immense pain. These crystals go into the joints and as they move it's like they're moving on glass. So meat is not something to be eaten only. Prophet I think was but once a week and Sayyidina Musa was practically vegetarian and loved herbs. So the prophetic way is, is not indulging in one particular thing excessively inshaAllah. But inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifu. As-salamu ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.